Welcome. It's our second panel discussion of Paris Fashion Week, and we're going to be talking about the Balenciaga show. Obviously, we'll be talking about Alex Wang because he's the head designer there. Um, I've got an amazing panel with me who are going to be unpicking everything from Balenciaga to JW Anderson's new investment to what we thought of Alex's Wang, Alex Wang's collection. But I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Jez. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Jez Sosa. I'm a fashion photographer and filmmaker. Hello, I'm Hetty Judah. I'm a writer and editor and I specialise in fashion, art and design. Hello, um, I'm Dimo Davis and I'm editor of Hero magazine. I like the way people said hello at the start. <laughs> it was very cheery, given how early it is. Um, as I said, I'd like to talk, before we start talking about Alex Wang and Balenciaga, I'd like to just speak a little bit about the news that we had yesterday about J.W. Anderson's investment, because obviously he's another kind of young designer. It's really exciting to see him um, given that financial support. And we discussed this, obviously, Hattie, yeah. when you were on the J.W. Anderson panel. What do, you, what do you think of that? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, he's clearly positioned himself to kind of move up into that next tier, because as we, I think as we said on that panel, he started really early doing, you know, resort collections. He was doing four collections a year from yeah. a kind of very, very, you know, early point in his career. But what's interesting is that the one thing I think I remember saying at that panel is, you know, he doesn't do very much, um, uh, he doesn't do that many accessories, he doesn't do that many yeah. bags. And then what's super interesting is he's also been picked up as creative director of Lueve, which is... I mean, I'm sure he'll do amazing things, but and clearly he's feeling ready to move into doing bags and that mm. kind of thing. But I mean, whether he can sustain doing all this at once is going to be, you know, interesting to see. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it, Dean? Because obviously, I think what Hetty says about mm. how he's going to sustain doing all this stuff—it's always a bit. There's always something a little bit sad when a designer gets picked up in that way because you're like, oh no, the pressure on them is huge. What, yeah. what do you think about it all? Um, I think it's kind of a nice one to go to after Stuart Weaver's. I think there's space there to kind of make an impact. Mm. But yeah, it's really interesting how it's it's basically kind of a luggage or bag label mm. and that isn't what we've seen from him so far. Mm. So there's kind of a lot of intrigue as mm. to you know what it will be like, I guess. Mm. I mean, he's done a couple of bags and when he's done bags, they've been very much, you know, totally original takes. He did those big kind of quilted <coughs> um, clutch, kind of yeah. oversized quilted clutches kind of a couple of seasons ago. And then he had a couple in that collection that we saw. Yeah. And I think with him, he's not really prepared to tread water with anything. If he's going to do something, he's mm. going to completely you know, want to reinvent mm. it and kind of really go out there in terms of technical innovation and structure. And I guess having something like Luevo behind you with that technical know-how could be really important mm. for him because when you're making a bag, yeah, there are certain things you can't do if you're operating at a certain level. Exactly, yeah, I think that's a really good point. It'll be interesting to see him have those resources and be able yeah. to... Yeah. I, I do want to talk a little bit, because obviously this fits very closely with Alex Wine being pointed at Balenciaga, about the way these appointments happen. Because at the moment, a lot of people we have on these panels say, you know, it's a real shame people aren't given enough time to settle into a position, you know, that mm. we see so much sort of HR movements in fashion, like no one's given enough time. Would you guys agree with that? Do you think that there is too much kind of put someone in, give them a couple of seasons, don't allow them to grow properly. I think it's partly about time, but I think it's partly about the way it's handled and the way it's managed um, mm. and the kind of space that people are given. I think it, people can start moving quite quickly. And if you look back at uh, Nicholas Gesquier's early collections, you know, they were, they, were, they were very respectful to the brand, but mm. still quite early on, he started to sort of bring in a very new thing. Mm. And I sort of get the impression that that's very much because he was nurtured and given the space, but also the support in the right way that he needed. And I think it very much depends on the kind of politics with which mm. how these people are brought in. But that's in. interesting because you say you know he was supporting. <coughs> sorry, losing my voice. Finally, it's happened. Um, you say he was supporting. I think at the start, I think that's definitely true. But we were talking before we went live. I think before you got here as well, Jess. Thanks for that. <laughs> we were talking about um, that amazing interview he gave when after he left, where he was quite candid about saying that you know the business structure there wasn't enough sort of direction. You were talking about that interview, Hattie. What did you make of his comment? Well, I mean, I think the, the key thing for me is that he was saying that he was producing all of this very creative work that was hitting the catwalk, and then what was on the catwalk was never actually making its way down into the shops. Mm -hmm. And he felt immensely frustrated that he was putting this kind of passion and talent out there, and it was getting great reviews, it was getting so much press. And then the company didn't have the faith that those designs would sell, yeah. and so they weren't actually being produced. I mean, I think the other interesting thing with Gasquier is that, in fact, he was at Balenciaga before, you know, he was there under Joseph Thimister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he had, he had grown up through the company. Yeah. So he was there right at the start of when, you know, the Balenciaga was being revived. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so it's different from, you know, very different from this situation where you literally have this guy who's so New York mm -hmm. being kind of 
flowing straight into this yeah. totally different um, environment. Mm. Dean, you were nodding when I was talking about kind of designers not really being given enough space or time, whatever it is. Do you think there's too much hype around appointments? Because I think everyone mentions yeah. that RAF Eddy thing. Do you yeah. think we, people? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily hype. I think it's comment. You know, with with Twitter, it's like everyone's got an opinion and it's mm. all at once, and it, that can be overwhelming, which kind of it isn't necessarily hype, but. Um, yeah, I do think people need time to, to kind of settle in. Because if you think about Alex Wang at Balenciaga, that this is his second Women's Wear Catwalk yeah. show, but he's already done a pre-collection and men's yeah. as well. Yeah. And it's like, the, and bags as well. Yeah. Mm. So the amount of stuff that he's done yeah. already, and you know, we're not even really beginning to see his vision of the brand yet, mm. is kind of, it's quite mind-blowing, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, it's kind of, there are two things that have happened really quite fast in fashion, I mean, I guess in the last decade and a half. Mm. And one is this kind of sudden move into you know, four collections a year, and actually more this idea of constantly drip feeding new stuff in, mm. new stuff in all the time. You know, particularly people like Burberry are really embracing already. Mm. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, rather than it just being these kind of two big presentations, there's constantly pressure to come up with new stuff. And the other one is this kind of fetishization of these old houses, which actually is something that's happened really quite, re you know, I think we forget how recent this is, that, you know, and not that long ago, you know, Chanel was this really kind of uncool old house that, you know, was really quite toxic. And yet at the point where Lagerfeld started in it, it wasn't a particularly exciting proposition. And it was the same with Balenciaga, you know, it's not that these houses have always been there, they've always been important. There, there was at some point this kind of industry decision to start, ca um, Capitalising on these, the yeah, on these yeah. old houses, and to get this idea of you know these are you know these are classic old couture houses. They've got certain codes, and this mm. represents that because it's a very easy way to create a brand, to create mm. a strong brand that's got some name recognition. And so you know, actually, there is no set formula to the way that you come into these houses. It's something that you know it's kind of being invented as we go along. Mm. But some of them have much stronger yeah. archives than others, and particularly in the case of Balenciaga, you know. It's, quite a fantastic archive which has mm. been referenced by you know Nicholas very much mm. and I think you know the, the strength of that legacy is, is still very important and you can see in the in you know Alexander's first collection that, that he's very much referenced that and been very kind of sensitive to that already mm. Mm. which I think is a good way to start with a legacy like that. Mm. The issues of archives are really important because I think that's where these appointments haven't worked, where the designers haven't been given proper access, access to, to the, the archives. archives. Like exactly. the McQueen example, everyone yeah. talks about as Givenchy, but I think like, mm. I think it's so yeah. the issue of archiving is really interesting. It's perhaps not something our viewers would know that much about. You'll tell us a bit. You're nodding. Well, no, in, in fact, no. I actually find it's kind of almost the other way around, where I think it's really, really difficult when you're appointing people that are extremely talented, creative people, and then expecting them to slot into somebody else's vision. I mean, yeah. if we look at Balenciaga, you know, this guy was born in 1895 in the Basque region. He was a devout Catholic. He used to go to church twice a day. He was influenced by, you know. Spanish art that was based on an imperial Catholic vision that was all to do with very constrained bodies, this kind of black carapace that was heavily embroidered. Mm. That's where he was taking his influence. You know, okay, it's amazing stuff and it's important and it's archived, but really what is that, you know, are we expecting Alexander Wang to take his inspiration from the same place? Does it mm. make sense? If you have somebody that's intensely talented and creative and has so much kind of flair and has so much coming out of them. I, f I think there's something slightly wrong to feel that they should really be they constrained by this idea that they have to be true mm. to the archive all the time. I think that's a really interesting point. And I think w what's interesting about how Nicholas Gesquier approached it is he was very sensitive to it in the beginning, but very quickly started taking it in very new directions. And I think also he's one of the few people that really is able to reference and then translate rather than just copy. Yeah. And I think that's really where the difference lies. Like the flamenco frills he did, that was such yeah. a kind of a nod and to the, the you know, he, brought a he brought a poetry and a philosophy in, in a way that Christabel did 50 years ago without copying it. Mm. But you know, his, his essence was the same kind of thing. He wanted to create new silhouettes. He wanted to shock, mm. but also to delight. And I think that's what's really interesting about that appointment about, and, and about what you saw on his catwalks. Mm. Do you think it's about embracing the spirit then? Because I think that's something that's really, I'm going to pick your brains, Dean, because I know you are you know far more about Eddie Slimane than I do, but I think that's what's interesting as well with what's happened at Saint Laurent, because obviously I think it's very easy to be like, oh, someone's like 
not showing any respect to the archive when actually there's a lot of ties that can be made to what Eddie's doing to what um, to what we saw at that house you know even just the name Saint Laurent that's actually not that controversial to Dr Eve from that yeah. you know that's what the ready to, to wear line was called and even just kind of this focus on youth culture do you think it's nice to see someone actually have a bit of a stronger vision and maybe the fashion press is being a bit antiquated in their criticism of that the problem is knowledge it's like if you're going to criticize it you have to have the knowledge and it's like with when when there was the name change back to the original branding it's like it's well documented in like 1966 the, the, the storefronts with that branding yeah. and it's like when everyone had that kind of twitter furore about it it's like well you're wrong you know yeah, you know exactly. what i mean there's a problem there um no i think it's great i think it's very modern what he's doing and really respectful mm. but also really contemporary as well mm. and, and i think it's great when when people you know do their own thing but i think you know the issue is is that we're now in, in a very different political structure. Mm. Um, I think that's, that's an important point. You know, 50 years ago, the designers were running their companies. Mm. Now people are very much brought in by big conglomerates who basically say, well, we need to sell this, this and this. And I think that's the first point. And I think the second point is, is that we're also in a different market of the way, the, what the public expects now. Um, you know, 50 years ago, Christopher was designing clothes that young women bold young women were finding exciting. If we reference that now, it's, they still look like interesting shapes, but ultimately it's something that was done 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly mm. the point about Saint Laurent now, mm. is that mm. actually to be able to, to be given the space to take this into the new and do something that's relevant now and fresh now is amazing. Mm. Do you think that's part of the reason that the Alex Wang appointment seemed to make so much sense? Because he is doing something that is so sort of in keeping with the zeitgeist. I think, yeah, I mean, it would be interesting, it would be really interesting to see the show. Yeah, I'm doing that thing that we shouldn't do, which is yeah. I'm speculating before we've seen properly, and yeah. I'm doing a thing that the fashion press does where we've seen like four <laughs> things from him, and I'm like, oh, what, is this good or is this bad? But I mean, I mean I, my feeling is that, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's quite a kind of cliche to talk about American designers and their, that, that kind of um, address of sportswear, but there is this quite interesting thing where, you know, if you do look at that um, classic Balenciaga thing, it's to do with these big architectural structures and these quite strong, oversized mm. shapes. And then you look at the way that sportswear has been going mm. in the last 15 years or so, and it really has been about getting bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger, yeah, and bigger exactly. and these padded things. And so weirdly, although it seems, you know, n not automatically like the best fit, in fact, weirdly, you can take those structures yeah. mm. and those oversized um, proportions from contemporary sportswear, or, you know, the kind of, you know, fashion interpretation of contemporary sports there, and that actually s weirdly makes sense yeah, with this. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're looking at those quite kind of poddy architectural shapes, mm -hmm. or those kind of orchid, orchid shaped kind of pleats mm -hmm. that he had in the last, mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the resort collection. Mm -hmm. Dean, I want to pick your brains because you, you did a brilliant interview um, with Alex Wang for Days and Confused, and he talked about his vision mm -hmm. for Balenciaga. Tell me a yeah. bit about the main sort of insights that came from that piece. Um, I think it was it was quite early days, really. It was um, when did we do the interview? It was May or June, I think. Mm. It was just just before the men's show, um, so he was just kind of settling in, really. But he was uh, one of the the vivid things I remember from that interview was um, a quote from him where he said he'll always remember the name above the door as Balenciaga, which I think kind of said a lot about his first collection for the brand. You know, it was very respectful, um, and I think you know he was in a difficult position to go to that brand that I wrote in the interview you know that that's a job no one wanted yeah, exactly. who would want to follow yeah. that yeah. and he went there and he did produce a really um, competent uh, covetable collection mm. and well done to him you know? yeah. Yeah. Collection, I'm sure. yeah mm. exactly mm. and I think you know like we're saying about people bringing something new you can't bring something new until you really have, have sort of understood mm. and sort of that heritage is seeped yeah. into you you have once to show respect got, the first time you, you know start, exactly you've got to understand it and once you understand it you can then kind of take take the learning and then kind of do your own mm. thing but mm. it, you know it, it does so i think dean's point about knowledge is so interesting to that because i think it's difficult for designers to get that balance right between being respectful in a way that's really true to the house, as you could say that Eddie Simone has done at Saint Laurent, mm -hmm. and being respectful in a really obvious sense where we look at it and quite simplistically go, oh, that's a nod to the code of Balenciaga. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's quite difficult mm -hmm. to do that because sometimes designers can be ultra respectful, but as Dean said, people yeah. don't get it. Because yeah. I, yeah, I think we also forget how long these people's careers are. I mean, you know, Balenciaga was designing for his house from the 1930s. He yep. started mm. before the Second World War. Mm. And yeah, it's the same with Saint Laurent. He's got mm. an archive that reaches from 
the mid late sixties through and you know it's like a forty year archive almost of stuff mm -hmm. of two very very large collections a year mm -hmm. yeah. and so you know okay sure there was you know smoking jackets and, and see through dresses and trouser suits and stuff but there were also some you know lots of eighties you know, kind of peacock mm. coloured things going on. It's not all kind of Mondrian classic. But that's the thing, if we saw those reference, people yeah. wouldn't, people would be like, oh, what's this? It's not so yeah. at all. I think there's, we get, it, you said the word codes before, and I always say it on these panels, and then I always regret it afterwards, because I think we do have this idea of codes with houses, and they are quite simplistic. And I think it's, it kind of what I was saying before, it's, we expect to see certain things from certain yeah. houses that don't remotely actually summarise everything that that designer did in their career. So let's say, you know, curved shoulders and, mm -hmm like slight Spanish influence you know there's always that kind of simplistic thing and I think that's what's really interesting I know I keep bringing it up with that San Laurent thing is we have these very fixed ideas like oh mm -hmm. if there isn't a tux he's not referencing the the archive mm -hmm. should we see what's happened for yes. yeah. the spring summer because I could go on for ages so I feel like we should <laughs> it's an amazing set So frustrated not being able to see things close up. I know. <laughs> to me, this, I know it's early to say this, but similar to what we saw in his own runway, you know, this little kind of pajama short, boxer short style. Yeah, well, I mean, I've obviously brought up the dreaded sporty kind of word earlier, but that, that's automatically what you're seeing a bit yeah. more. It's kind of little tennis skirts. and Their streams are always yeah. so jumpy. I don't know if this is just our connection or not, but. Feels, it feels a bit younger than the last one. Yeah, a lot younger. That's nice. So this is what you were saying about the kind of bulky sportswear thing, but that seems like a very Balenciaga shape to me. Yeah. What I'm also not sure about is the kind of colours coming out, because there were pieces earlier that looked like they were kind of pinkish, and yeah. I can't really tell whether he's sticking to that kind of... No, White and black. We should maybe have a look at the pictures afterwards yeah. as well, because this is a pretty terrible stream. I like the presentation with the mirrors. Mm. Yeah. Because really yeah. also I thought that was a mirror at the back, but actually Me too. going all the way yeah. up. Indeed, yeah. It still looks like quite a select presentation. It doesn't look like a big, no, a big audience. Yeah, tiny. I think it's interesting that because I think of Alex Wang as quite a poppy designer. You know, it, like his own shows, it's very kind of, it's very accessible in that sense. So it's quite interesting to see that it's kind of scaled right down. That's very Balenciaga. And I wonder because I know for the resort collection, he was going back into the archive to use old prints. I, I imagine he may have done the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult to tell from this distance. Which, of course, is such a contrast to the kind of you know, cheeky thing that he was doing with his own collection, using his own logo as the as the actual ba you know, basic yeah. material of things. What do we think of some of the shapes that we're seeing here? Because it does, I think, you know, we we all kind of said younger. No, I mean, very much so, because even the long skirts with that kind of little rigid Peplum. overskirt, is, um, they're quite unforgiving. I feel like there's much more of him in it than there was in the first season. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. But this goes to Hetty's point yeah. about what will make it off the catwalk into an actual... I wonder how Alex Wang will kind of deal with that issue that I guess he talks about struggling with so much. I mean, I also just don't know how they're positioning it. I was looking through Vogue just now, and you know, yeah, they're not saying. advertising at the front of Vogue, and they're not, you know, I feel like I've not seen very much of that last collection in shoots. So, I mean, maybe they're just hanging in there to see how it's received, I don't know. Mm. But one thing, sorry, sorry. to interrupt you. Uh, one thing I noticed um, is that they've, they've had a little readjustment on the font they use. Yeah. It's kind of gone back to another kind of classic one. Mm. So that's, that's quite an, a thing of note as well, that mm. there is a complete, Recontextualization. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, 
I mean, it, it feels really, like they're talking to a much younger audience. Yeah, it feels very American, actually. To yeah, me. it does. Yeah. All these pants. Yeah. It's, it's that odd thing where it's, it's almost going back to his counterparts in the 40s in America, as opposed to you know, you know, I don't think he did trousers ever. I can't imagine he would have. Um, but then that's a very Gessier thing, you know, great trousers. Yeah. It's like Balenciaga is kind of. And I think it's interesting to see him reference that period as well as the original house. I think it's yeah, very easy I think that to is presume that designers have to just kind of scratch yeah. away yeah. 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 other yeah. people that have worked within the house. And I think that's actually more exciting to see. Yeah. I mean, that's a very interesting look there. So that's kind of relating to, you know, something you can see as kind of 40s, 50s evening wear, but mm. then it's turned into something that's really quite sporty. Because you look at the shoulder line, that's like an evening dress shoulder line. Mm something very glamorous then with these little shorts underneath it. So there definitely has been some more colour, I mean kind of just pinks really, mm. isn't there? Nudes and pinks, and, yeah. Is that green? Interesting. Palette green. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this. I can't quite put my finger on. Well, there is this extraordinary thing where there's this kind of top half that's almost like this incredibly formal, mm -hmm. yeah, old style evening wear, and then it's going down into these little tiny kind of skater and tennis skirts and um, quite rigid little shorts, isn't it? It's like a game of consequences. Mm. It's a shame, really. You can't the really fabrics, see the details. I mean, so. you can't yeah. see the, yeah. you can't we'll, see we'll the have details. To go to photos the, the fabrics feel kind of lighter than perhaps we used to. Mm. Well, I loved all that amazing cracked leather and yeah. stuff. You know, I think mm. that's. It's always maybe it's difficult for spring summer with. Yeah. to do something that's really sort of... I, Dean, you said the word competent before, and I think that's so... That's a perfect yeah. summing up of his first collection. It just yeah. felt so technically competent. Whereas with this, I think it's a lot yeah. harder for spring, summer to yeah. kind of... It's and much softer. It's softer and lighter, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Move nicely there, the fabric. Yeah. The length just really surprises me because it doesn't feel really in keeping with what else we've been seeing this season. We've been seeing a lot of that kind of on the knee or below the knee, and it's felt really current, you know, a lot of, even in a really casual way with like big jumpers slung over it. So to see something ultra, ultra short, especially given that he did this at his own label, I don't know, I, I'm surprised to see, to see this in a way. Well, I mean, I don't know, maybe they've, you yeah. know, God knows what kind of um, communication goes on from you know, the powers that be and the designer yeah. when they're creating something, where they've decided that the Balenciaga of a woman is somebody actually kind of super young that's going to be looking for this kind of length that has the money mm. to spend on yeah. something yeah. that's sophisticated. I th there seems, there seems, yeah, it feels like there's been a, a very definite decision there. I think so. That's how you give energy to that kind of, like we're saying, you, you give energy to a look that's, what, 50 years old. It's mm. by, you know making it Make short, it making it sexy and mm. making it into kind of a wardrobe that young girls can identify with. Mm. Mm. But should fashion be a y young girls? Should it be about making a model look great? Because, you know, who's going to buy... Like, I can't afford Balenciaga, you know? Like, who's... Girls my age don't... Yeah, but I think, I think there's a label for everyone. We've all got, like, our favourite um, houses or designers to shop at. It's, you know... There should be something for everyone. Just because yeah. Balenciaga might not work for one person, it would be brilliant on someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's always something for everyone. I think, yeah. But is this I'd hate it if everything was the same. Yeah, fair enough. Is this enough of a proposition for a wardrobe, though? To me, this feels like one kind of girl. I, yeah. Uh, most of it feels But it's her young wardrobe. To me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, there are a couple of longer looks that came out, so we've got another, we've got a slightly different. But then there are some trousers there. and there are some yeah. slightly yeah. old, there's yeah. some older stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. I bet, I I bet there's really good accessories. Kind of yeah, the yeah. accessories Consider look amazing. Classic. I, yeah. I love how prim the accessories are in a sense, and the bow in the back of the hair, it's quite... And also this is a cat, you know, he's putting across a and vision, this is, I this think. Is, this is slightly old, you know, this is older and slightly more... 
I really want to see images now because I'm just really want to see this up close. But it's funny because it's short, but it's very buttoned up as well. What is that? Is that buttoned down the front? Yeah, I think so. That looked like a buttoned down front. So it really is all about the legs. It's, you know, it's legs and shoulders, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. This feels a lot, there's a lot of confidence to this, I think it is. I think this is going to get a lot of analysis. I yeah. think he's really sort of putting his vision out there in a way that we didn't see. I think it's quite, yeah, I think it's bold for the second season. I think it's good. I kind of like that it's a little bit trampy as well. It feels quite cool. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's the other thing. You know, we look at the, the, the kind of classic Balenciaga pieces from the 40s and 50s and whatever now, and they still look unusual and they're still mm. amazing. Yeah. They still yeah. feel new. But obviously, you know, they're part of our vernacular now. Mm. I think unusual is a good word because something like that look, that does feel unusual. That feels... If you saw a girl in that, you'd be interested yeah. by it. You and know, I, and yeah. I think, and I think that's nice. You know, that yeah. that feels like the right philosophy. Mm. It feels yeah. like bringing the philosophy mm. into now. I do. Can we look at images, Neil? Just because it's so hard to see. In a way that Nicholas Gessier did too. Yeah. Very much. And I like that when you see that, all those looks from his last collection on the red carpet. You know, the girls are always put in the worst dress lists on things like in those horrible celebrity magazines. There's something kind of, I like that that it takes a kind of. It's difficult to wear. Mm -hmm. Well, these are very fresh, very young. I mean, you can you imagine these, these could really go hit the red carpet. Quite yeah, fast. and a lot of this is girl. easier to wear, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it is very flattering, which some Balenciaga yeah. pieces aren't. You know, it, 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 in an easy way, and yeah. a lot of this is easier to wear, I think. They meet more immediately accessible, mm. I think. When you see it actually in the walkthrough, does the print stand out far more than... Mm. Mm. Oh, it'd be nice to have a closer look at those. Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice that. But the, that backs, the backs are very, very important as mm. well. In pretty much every single silhouette, there's something going on, interesting going on at the back, whether yeah. there's an yeah, aperture right. or a fold mm -hmm. or a cape. I really like the movement of the fabric as well. It felt, yeah, it felt really nice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Little jaunty run. I know. <laughs> I don't know how he has that much energy. <laughs> Be like staggering out and collapse on the floor. <laughs> yeah, cool. Let's have a look at images a bit. But what's our kind of immediate take on that? Oh, it's a depart. It's a big departure from the the first collection, the mm. resort collection. Mm. Feels very much more him. Mm. Mm. Feels more him, feels younger. But it does feel like that, that sense of the Balenciaga philosophy of, you know, something slightly different, something which will mm. appeal to the younger. Because ultimately, you know, Balenciaga of old, you know, in the mm. 40s and 50s, that would have appealed to young girls. Mm. Mm. Whether or not they could afford it, it would have very much appealed to them. Yeah. It's, it's bold, it's different, it's, it's not the norm. Dean touched on a really, really interesting point when he said that that's how you make a house relevant, you know, that's how you bring in new customers. And I think there is this element of having to make a change. Yeah, look, look he's taken that silhouette and made it into a biker jacket. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what we really couldn't see. Isn't yeah, it? Mm. their streams are awful. <laughs> and wow, yeah, that looks like it's got cool. some amazing yeah. Yeah. Really and, uh, cool. um, quilting work on it That's well. really cool. Really cool. I'd love like to totally see it. Can we, is there any way to see that up close? Because I think there's all kinds of stuff going on there. Can we, there's seen this sort of stitching, yeah. rows of stitching around. and Because oh, no, again, choose. you know, Philosophical was a, a, a couture house. It wasn't a mm. ready-to-wear house. And so that heavily worked thing is so part wow. of it. Let's do runway and then let's do close-ups after yeah. Neil. Thanks. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love the contrast between it being very short and quite sensual, but also being really prim. You know, and I think, yeah. that's and I really think particularly that look, well, and this look, there's a lot of Alex in there, and there's also quite a lot of, you know, yeah. a lot of reference in there. I think it's quite a nice mix.
It just makes me really sad to see shorts like that because they look amazing on her and they looked amazing in his own collection, but I can just see them all across the streets of like London and Britain when they're done in bad copies and how horribly unflattering that's going to be and it makes me really sad. I'd give it Alan Partridge on them. <laughs> <laughs> Pull them out nice and nice. <laughs> I imagine it's going to be Russian millionaires' wives, isn't it? Yeah. For jogging. But I'd really, yeah. <laughs> but I'd really love oh to have, a, have a, th a look at what um, fabric he's using for mm. this, because from here it looks like he's actually using a really unusual, kind yeah, of quite yeah, heavyweight, yeah. stiff kind of couture standard fabric. Oh, that's amazing. I think it's, it's great the point you made, Hetty, about it being a couture house, and I think that's really interesting when you look at kind of what we expect. It is, I think we expect something more from Balenciaga than we expect from other mm. ready-to-wear houses. There's always this kind of sense that we will see, we've all said the word unusual quite a lot, but a bit more technical ability than we'd perhaps demand of other houses. I think that's quite an interesting point. What's also quite interesting is that when you were looking at this, you're getting that slightly space-age feel. Yeah. And you yeah. had, in fact, people like Ungaro and Karej kind of were working under Balenciaga and that kind of then fed into that. We're almost seeing that kind of evolution happening again. Yeah. It's funny. So you're getting that quite kind of poddy, uh, sheeny kind of thing going on. Mm. I thought it was really interesting what Gareth Pugh did yesterday as well, because that was kind of, it was futuristic, but very soft as well. I'm quite interested he's gone for that shape. That of bag skirt looks as well. insane. Yeah. I really want to see the close ups of the bag. And those shoes are very, they're very, very much a nod to what Gestia did at Balenciaga as well, which I think is interesting. Why do you think there is this attitude that, you know, designers have to go back to the original, the codes of the original house, but perhaps not reference other designers that, w that's work, that have worked there? It is, I mean, as I said, I think we're kind of making this up on the hoof you know it's mm. not something that's been in place for a very long time I think people can do what they like mm. but I mean you know obviously when you know you have a great big conglomerate purchasing a house like Balenciaga they're going to want it to be distinct from their other brands and mm. so it's an easy way of imposing some kind of so you know we say okay Balenciaga it's a very intellectual brand it's a very structured offering mm. it's about creating a complete look it's about mm. um, you know interesting embellishment and kind of um, structure. But, um but I think also commercially heritage has become much more important as a tool to sell things, particularly in it because of you know the way things are produced and things are so quick and throwaway mm. and everything else, that actually there's been a real move back to heritage, whether it's in the big fashion labels or, or, or other brands. Mm. And it's very much become a much more powerful selling point than it was 20 mm. years ago. Nobody cared about heritage 20 years ago as a consumer. Mm. And I think that's probably had a lot to do with why people are feeding back into the heritage of the brand in the way that they are. Do you think are. that's because there's so much fashion out there, people almost, and they trust a name more, they, cause it seems to signify luxury? Uh, it's a really hard question when we get onto things. I mean, I think the problem is they, there came a point where everybody was doing exactly the same yeah. to sell on their brands. Everybody mm. was doing this heritage thing. And there were people that where it was complete crap and they were just inventing heritage, yeah. heritage mm. themselves. And because then there were brands a, that had yeah. been around for 180 years that were doing it. Can we pause and so that it got really on? kind of muddied. And so I think it's actually quite important that brands are looking mm. for a fresh way of selling. On the other hand, I mean, these are brands that are all going to be wanting to move into the Far East, uh, into the, you know, the, the emerging markets. You know whether that's you know Brazil, China, Russia, and it you know it gives a kind of story. And I guess you know if you're saying you know we're something that's cherished mm -hmm. and you know, we've got a long backstory, maybe it's an easy word for them to sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not my area at all, but because you, you, you've worked at a fair few style titles, did you notice a point you know where heritage became cool? Uh, I can't say it, I I noticed a point really. I think I probably came into it too late I started writing about 2006 something like that mm. and I think it was already getting to that point then because there was this kind of new wave of revitalized houses yeah. that were at that point more exciting than a lot of like what young designers were doing yeah. because there were young designers at these big houses and they had the budget to just make it great yeah which goes back to what yeah. we we're saying about Jonathan Anderson at the mm. moment it's kind of yeah there is something there feels like a bit of a fresh wave at the mm. moment actually with him mm -hmm. at Luove and then with, with Alex Wang at Balenciaga. Mm. Nueve is a classic case where they've, I mean, yes, they've been around for a long time, but they're not a 
heritage luxury goods brand. Mm -hmm. They were a luggage company. Yeah. Um, and when I was, in fact, I think one of the <laughs> ex um, handbag exhibitions I worked on, I actually found all these papers, litigation papers from the 1950s where they'd been ripping off other people's designs. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, because in those days, you just didn't really see. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, there wasn't that much communication between you know, Northern and Southern Europe, so they were just basically copying, yeah. you know, kind of a suitcase that somebody was producing up in, in Belgium and uh, mm. they took out a court case against them. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not like the, this has always been some sophisticated, mm. cutting-edge mm. fashion brand. Mm -hmm. yeah. But on the other hand, you know, if you've got, you know, leather ateliers and you have people that know how to put things together and how to construct things, that's something that's worth hanging on to. Mm. But I think the message gets very muddied. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, even Louis Vuitton hasn't been making ready-to-wear for that long, is it? What's it, 97? Yeah. yeah. It's not that long, really. Mm. And you think about it now, and it's, it's ingrained in the vision of the brand, You've the, the look and the bag. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing about Louis Vuitton, mm. of course, is they're not a leather brand. Mm. 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 They yeah. make things out of canvas, exactly. and suddenly it's become all about, you know, all, you know luxury leather goods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, these, those big monogram bands, bags are, are canvas, and they started off making canvas to go inside of luggage trunks. Mm. So how that then got translated into mm. being all about kind of... But, very, but, that's, but that's, that, yeah. that's the beauty so of commerce, because yeah. you know, the whole story. notion of heritage doesn't actually have to be exactly, yeah. you know, oh, well, we made leather bags and therefore we still make leather bags. You know, people mm. buy into that heritage of a label and that, you know, that's kind of the beauty for these mm. brands is that they get away with it's it. Prada is an interesting fiction. one with yeah. that as well, with yeah. that kind of heritage of leather and, and how people interpret yeah. Prada's fashion history. I yeah. find that really interesting. But I think, but what's interesting in the case of Balenciaga is that the heritage, you know, how I, how I look at the heritage of it is actually it's more of a philosophy. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. Um, and, and I think that was what was very, very beautiful about what Nicolas Gessier did. And actually, I think what Alexander, your city is, we're mm. starting to see here. I think that's the same at Saint Laurent. And I think that's yeah. what's interesting about what Eddie does. It. I think when you accept it, a heritage is less about code and more about philosophy. It makes you a lot it's, more it's accepting a of a designer's yeah, vision. It's a really good point. Yeah. It's intellectual. Mm. It's, it's an attitude. Yeah. And, and to mm. be, and, and, and but obviously you need to be able to be given the space to actually approach it from that mm. way, rather than people go, oh well, you need to reference this. Because well, it is very simplistic when you're like, where's that code? Where's yeah. that code? It's like a checkbox, mm. and that's not much room for innovation. But it? I really feel that he's beginning and being allowed to sort of mm. embrace it from mm. a point of philosophy rather than kind of... I love that look that we yeah. just saw. I'm so glad we can see the pictures yeah, I, I thought know. I needed glasses totally, that yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> Their streams, <laughs> I remember the streams. <laughs> I think it was Balenciaga's last collection. It was literally just like close-ups of the knees and stuff. <laughs> Can we see what, I mean, are those just little geometric shapes? They look like, sure I, when we go to the close-ups, we'll on. be able to see. I almost feel like those are actually embroidered on, like, mm. flowers for yeah. three dimensions, like, they're actually on the surface as opposed I to I love the print. dimensional element. You mentioned mm. the backs when mm. we were watching that terrible stream, but I think there's something really interesting about about how he's doing such small silhouettes, it's actually really short, mm. a lot off the shoulder, but there's so much going on there, but there's an ease to it as well, yeah. which I find interesting. But, I mean, again, it's, I think we were talking on the, um, J.W. Anderson panel about the power that Instagram and these little images now has and the, what they do to the way that people design it. Detail, yeah. what, this is very much not the kind of collection that comes across that well on this because you're not seeing the side view, you're not seeing the back mm. view, you're not seeing all the details. So, so much is going to be lost if mm. you're just seeing mm. the image And that I find big. that so interesting given what he did for his own collection, which was pretty much the most Instagrammable collection we've seen all season. You know, those big parent advisory logos, the little pyjamas. It felt like a collection for the Instagram generation, whereas this, as you say, is completely not. You know, it's all about the back. That doesn't work online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's that 300. I mean, I'm, I imagine it's going to be quite an amazing one to photograph, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's stunning, isn't it? And again, you just want to go deeper to and deeper and deeper. Into that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I like to, it's nice to see, you know, the ruffle. It's nice to see that done in such a kind of dynamic way, you know, in such a, I love that that's kind of a racer back, mm. kind of a vest. It's very sportswear, but then you have that ruffle, which is, Hattie, you were talking very eloquently before about but none the of it, evening it, work. None of it feels forced. It doesn't feel like it has he's forcing, really his, to it. He's it's forcing yeah. his shape into their shape. It, it actually mm. feels very yeah. natural. Yes, that has a lovely balance, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. Mm. But then also all of these surprises as they turn around. I mean, mm. it's like it's like really fine French cooking. Mm. You know, like <laughs> like really exquisite but light as well. You yeah, know? that's made me really hungry now. So <laughs> <laughs> And there's, a, there's an interesting sense of poetry in this that I've more than I feel in his own collection. Yeah, I think there's mm. a simplicity to his own collection. Yeah. When I was saying poppy before, that's kind of probably the wrong word, but there's, 
there is a kind of accessibility and I, I don't think it's simplistic but it's definitely kind of yeah it's, it's more open whereas this yeah. feels a little bit for those in the know yeah. which yeah. I think is very important yeah. to Balenciaga yeah. the sense of intelligence and yeah. It's quite interesting looking at the edging that was on that last silhouette. Because you remember at the beginning when we were talking about those little Alan Partridge shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined what they're now going to be known as. Um, and how difficult they were to wear. Of course, now that same kind of uh, silk edging is coming up on these last yeah. two really very sophisticated ones. So it's almost like he's trying to explain to you where, where that, was that from. comes yeah. from. Yeah. And then he's taking that across the collection. And, and also justify, justifying that with this in, in mm. a lot of ways. I'm interested to this say is amazing, I love this. When you say to explain, that's really great in a way, because I wonder, I think one of the things that I was most excited by when he got appointed was the kind of, and it, it goes back to what you were saying, Dean, the new audience that will get excited by Balenciaga and you hope will then find out about Balenciaga mm. and get excited about a heritage house. And I find that really exciting when you think, it is pulling new people into into these older houses and and encouraging people to you know educate themselves about it and find out about Balenciaga and consider couture and it's quite yeah I find that really exciting yeah I mean if it's going to continue and it's going to be relevant it can't be fusty you have to inject that modernity into it mm. 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 what's interesting with the last couple of looks is that there's a whole other narrative coming through which is you know that kind of girl in the summer getting up first thing in the morning and shoving a shirt on and walking out without, you know, just with a shirt over her underwear or over her bikini or whatever. It's quite, there is that quite kind of interesting casual look, mm. particularly with the white, the couple of white silhouettes before that. It was very kind of sexy summer. Mm. Easy. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. even the one before that actually, mm. that one. Mm. I mean, that's a very sexy little outfit and mm. it's, but it is that kind of summer, you know, just kind of throwing something on. Mm. But it kind of slightly yeah, undressed. Yeah, but it also has, a, but it also has, a, you know, just a little touch of structure up here. You mm. know, it's not just yeah. a loose casual thing that mm. we've got here yeah. up on the top. It's, it's. But again, he's going, he's referencing those that pair of shorts right from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not going to mention the name of again. The Alan Park. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the top is very yeah. much, you know, yeah. it's mm. much more refined. I think, and I think that's an interesting mix. I think, it, I think that is the kind of overarching theme of this collection. You have this quite formal top going yeah. on with, mm. with real, yeah. Something younger on the bottom, or nothing on the bottom. Then the fascinating thing about that is the way you mix it. Like a, mm -hmm. an older client, if they were to wear the top half and put it with some really incredible trousers, trousers. which I'm sure yeah. exactly. are also in yeah. the collection showroom, yeah. you've, got, you've got a real kind of whole vision of the brand there. Yeah. And that's quite mm. an interesting thing, that, you know, that unity. Mm. And I like the fact that he's had the confidence to put across a vision on the catwalk when, as you yeah. say, like I said before, this feels very young. It doesn't feel like it would relate to a lot of people. I actually kind of take that back now, because as you say, you could put this with an incredible mm. pair of trousers and it would look amazing. Yes, because I, I was thinking that. about that before we started the panel, that the kind of the whole Balenciaga ethos was very much about creating a total shape mm -hmm. and a total style, which very much goes against the way that we're now told that, you know, in this imaginary world in which we none of us have jobs are meant to dress, where we can <laughs> kind of go off and find vintage clothes and things from charity shops and mix it with a bit of high street and a bit of high end, um, as opposed to just furiously doing online shopping on outlet stores. Um, <laughs> But so it, it actually very much goes against that kind of jumbled up mm. ethos and it is a very dumb look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how that's, that's going to translate down. Beautiful. I love those little covered really buttons, beautiful. that's so beautiful. Come on now fashion, stay with us. <laughs> okay. Now is that one piece or is that a kind of it overcoat? Like I one think piece. it's one piece, yeah. yeah. That's amazing because it's almost like a quite formal suit jacket with mm. this evening coat over the top that's mm. kind of... Mm. Ghostly. Mm. Mm. And is this a kind of co Beautiful. neck collar kind of collar? Yeah, and I love that because that feels so sort of young and so that's something you'd expect on an Alex Wang runway and it's nice to see that put against something which is so like a traditional evening if you thing. squint at that that's amazing because you've, you've literally got probably about 50 years apart there because the layer underneath is very Alex Wang but then the sheer layer on top that's very what like 50s or something I mm. don't know mm. that's really fascinating mm. I love these pieces. Mm. 
No. With a collection like this, it goes back to what we were saying about a designer being at the house. It's kind of not about the pieces, though. It's about him putting across a vision. And I think you kind of hope that people will be accepting of that, because I don't think anyone would want him to play it safe. Aw, you know, <laughs> he's so cute. Can we see the close-ups, Neil? Thank you. Suspense. God, it's almost, it's almost kind of like rope. Yeah, I was going to say like raffia. Extraordinary. Well, he had kind of raffia covered hats yeah. in the resort collection, didn't he? Yeah. This is amazing. It's fascinating. Beautiful. I didn't notice as many accessories when we looked at the pictures, mm. no. actually. But yeah, the fastenings on the back of that la last silhouette were extraordinary. Yeah. Is this what we were expecting to see from him? Because we all kind of, Hetty, you said before that this really feels like a step forward. That's incredible. Yeah, that's a really good bag shape. Are you impressed, Dean, by what you've seen? Yeah, I think it's very sophisticated. Mm. I actually, I didn't really kind of think about what it might be like. I kind of thought it would be maybe a, an evolution of the first collection, but there's a lot more of him in this. Mm. Mm. I agree. But it's still, it's still very respectful. And not in a, I don't mean that in a, a derogatory way. I think it's, yeah, beautiful, especially mm. that last passage of looks. Mm. I th yeah, I think it's respectful in a philosophical way more than the first collection was respectful in more of a sort of material way. Mm. These, uh, but these clothes are real sensory experience. It seems yeah. like I really want to like, see what these fabrics are like, feel what the fabrics mm. are like. Mm. And the shoes are interesting because there's a sort of, not, not so much on these ones, but on some of them, there's a strap almost a bit like this at the top of them. Yeah. Um, balanced. And very on trend. Yes, yeah. very on trend. <laughs> Always. <laughs> And I'm really excited that somebody's going back to this, you know, really technically sophisticated mm. way of making this clothes, amazing. and wow. this real yeah. commitment to intimate detail. Mm. Mm. Yeah. At a distance, this looks very kind of casual and sporty, but when you get in there and see uh, that, yes. I think that, and that for me, that's I think one of the most extraordinary that's outfits incredible. of this whole collection, yeah. actually. And but I'd I love to look closer at those flowers because I think mm. that they're um, embroidered on. I think they're sticking mm. out of it. Really? Yeah. They almost look like crushed spiders. I really love it. Something really kind of off about it. Is it's it interesting that you mentioned that crafty type thing, you're seeing someone go back to technical stuff, because I think that, that doesn't, to me, feel very New York, apart from with Proenza, but that, to me, feels very London. If you look at what someone like Simone is doing, you know, it's incredibly technical, that's her whole thing, and I think I saw a lot of that in London this season, that the focus seemed to be on you know, amazing fabrics, amazing techniques, amazing structures, and it's interesting, as you say, to see that as a kind of a new type of luxury. It's like younger designers are really trying to, to show their skill and prove their worth, in a way. And I think that's what's made Simone so great, is you can't question her genius, really, when you look mm. at something being so technical. But it's also, you know, in one way, that's part of a big notion, part, a big part of the notion of luxury. Mm. But I think we lost that for a while, where luxury became, you know, we had all that print stuff in London, yeah. and luxury became more visual and mm. became less about... There's real wit in this collection as well. That bag then was like, if you looked at the way it was fastening, it's like a cardboard box at the top. Yeah. Yes. Like what, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, you know, there's a lot of layers to it, it seems like. And I think that ribbon edge at the bottom, again, is kind of going right back to that little, you know, the, the edging on other things. Mm. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of playing with dimensions all mm. the way through. There's a real exactly. coherence to this, isn't there, which I think mm. is really exciting. And it's, as you say, it's very intelligent. Yeah. It's incredibly very confident. Witty. Incredibly confident. I love that it's like bra straps on shoes. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, yes that's a, that is. A, and also practical. <laughs> I like the kind of underwear style, you know, like the little shorts that are like boxes. Yes, you're so right about that strap as well. That's just like your Velcro strap. And the back is sneakers. like the back of a pair of trainers. I think it's yeah. very beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah, the way that goes up exactly like mm. a pair of trainers. Yeah, the footwear's great. Yeah. And I love that that bow is so prim, but it also looks a bit like a sweatband around your mm. head. You know, again, it's that. I'm really obsessed with this now. Yeah. I feel like there's so much more that this collection is going to give me. I feel like mm. every time I look at it, I'm going to discover yeah. something else. And I think that's what makes a great collection. 
because it's not really about liking it then you know it's about trying to understand the vision oh this is the one that we wanted to look at wasn't mm. it and that almost looks an like amazing, air taxi doesn't yeah, it it's an amazing textile are you impressed Tetty, by what you've seen i think i'm i'm really thrilled actually um mm. I, I i didn't have any particular expectations but i feel that he's made it his own mm. he's he's enjoyed the resource that comes with having you know this big mm. name to access so he's you know the technical resource of being able to create I mean it's not obviously he's not creating couture but he's got obviously a very very good technical atelier working with him doing you know work and he's got access to amazing fabrics mm. um, and obviously great dressmaking skills I mean to do for example those sheer coats when you're doing tailoring in a sheer fabric mm. there is not any room for error or cheating at all because mm. you're seeing all the stitching going on there so I mean that's a real that's almost like a kind of you know a show off technical exercise mm. um, but isn't it wonderful to see someone show off you no know? no no and it's great and I and, and again you know we would talk and you know as I said earlier to see somebody that's you know okay presenting something that you is fun you can look at on your iPhone but you really have so much more going on mm. that's you know really there actually for the person that's going to be wearing these clothes mm. This yeah, is wonderful. It's very old school in that manner. It's mm. not about pleasing. You touched on earlier Instagram. Yeah. It's about mm. pleasing the client He's and about the luxury of wearing yeah. mm. incredible clothes. And that's very couture. That ethos. Mm. You know, it's about the wearer. It's yeah. not about mm. the viewer. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah, they, I bet they feel amazing mm. to wear. And I think you'd feel amazing. You'd feel so intelligent. Yeah, it's that thing yeah. of I know something that you don't. You know, I'm wearing Balenciaga. I understand a code that you perhaps aren't privy to. I think that's a very old school style of fashion which is really exciting well let's hope they actually get produced and put into shops i know <laughs> that's a really good point let's hope that so what would we like to see next for alex wang what are our hopes for his future that his collection gets produced and put into shops that's a very yes. good hope <laughs> and used in shoes mm -hmm. you're not looking at jazz <laughs> <laughs> <used in> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> where would you like to see him journey next dean um i'd like to see a, a men's runway show to be honest with you i mean uh, we looked at the the last one in the showroom in june that was great. That's mm. the most consistent Balenciaga men's collection I've seen in years. Mm. And I'd be interested to see where he can take that. If he can apply some of this to the men's collection, that would be really phenomenal. Mm. And he can build a real story. Well, this is nice. Yeah. We have lots of real hopes. Yeah. <laughs> Usually people are like, oh, it's really fired me up. It's good. <laughs> yeah. well, I was actually, I have to say, I was quite nervous on this <laughs> before watching this because I had felt that he'd been, well, you see, you see, you know, they were competent collections, mm. but there was a slight thing he was maybe treading water, yeah. mm -hmm. feeling his way mm -hmm. around. So um, this is just, I think this is a triumph. I'm very point. interested to see what reactions mm -hmm. will be like to this as well. It's one of those ones where you feel like this is going to be, it feels like there's more to give from this. It's very exciting. What else are we looking forward to for the rest of Paris? Just because it's our second panel. What are we looking forward to? Me? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Dean, what are you looking forward to? Um, come de Garçon, yep. as always. Uh, Saint Laurent. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're going to have to start fun. saving up now, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> Yourself? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'll, well, I'm doing your Hyde Rackham panel on Saturday morning. Oh, so are you lucky thing? I know, yeah. I'm really yeah. excited about that. His <laughs> men's was beautiful as the well. The men's was really, amazing. Really yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's a okay. highlight for me, always. <laughs> Hyde Rackham in. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations, Alex Wang. This is amazing. Really I feel really energised now, which is impressive, given how early it is. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Good start of the day.